against lawmakers press FBI on alleged bias in Clinton, Trump cases. The Republican chairman of the House Judiciary Committee lambasted to the FBI on Thursday over how it handled an investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server and questioned whether Justice Department officials gave her preferential treatment over President Donald Trump. During a routine oversight hearing before the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee, Republicans questioned FBI Director Christopher Wray, who took over at the helm of the Federal Bureau of Investigation after Trump abruptly fired the previous head. James Comey, earlier this year. Republicans, including Trump, have in recent weeks ramped up their attacks on the FBI and openly questioned its integrity. The FBI's reputation as an impartial, non-political agency has been called into question recently. We cannot afford for the FBI, which has traditionally been dubbed the premier law enforcement agency in the world, to become tainted by politicization or the perception of a lack of even-handedness. Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte said. Their criticism comes as special counsel Robert Mueller has charged four people from Trump's inner circle since October as part of an investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Republicans had been frustrated with Comey's decision not to charge Hillary Clinton for sending classified emails through her private email server. With potential challenges looming for the party as it heads into the 2018 congressional elections, House and Senate Republican leaders have ramped up attacks on Comey. Mueller and the FBI in recent weeks with a fresh round of congressional inquiries. Most recently, Republicans have questioned whether Mueller's team has a political bias against Trump. After media reports that FBI agent Peter Strzok was removed from working on the Russia probe because he had exchanged text messages that disparaged Trump and supported Clinton. Strzok was involved in both the Clinton email and Russia investigations. Rep. Gerald Nadler told Ray he expected the attacks on the FBI to grow louder as the special counsel's investigation continues and the walls close in around the president. Your job requires you to have the courage to stand up to the president, Mr. Director, Nadler said. There are real consequences for allowing the president to continue unchecked in this manner. Republicans have also separately accused the FBI of improperly basing wiretap requests on a dossier written by Christopher Steele, a former British intelligence investigator who was hired by the firm Fusion GPS to do opposition research for the Democrats. Steele's dossier alleges collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign in the 2016 presidential election and claims the Russians possess compromising information that could be used to blackmail Trump. To date, however, there has been no evidence to suggest the FBI wiretaps were improperly obtained. GOP Senator rebukes party for equating Franken to more. There's a difference between 14 years old and adult. Republican Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana on Thursday suggested that members of his party were wrong to justify supporting Alabama GOP Senate candidate Roy Moore by comparing his child molestation allegations to sexual harassment accusations that have been leveled at Democratic Sen. Al Franken, Minnesota. While speaking to the Fox radio program Kill Meet and Friends, Cassidy declined to say if President Donald Trump had been wrong to support more. I just decided I don't want to be there, Cassidy explained. That still stands. Do you feel is the same way about Al Franken? Do you think he should not be in the Senate? Host Brian Kilmeade wondered. Again it's up to the people of Minnesota, but if Al Franken has been involved in this kind of activity as a senator that's problematic on the other hand there is a difference between a 14-year-old girl and an adult female. I will say that, Cassidy pointed out. Skier Lindsey Vaughn, I'm representing the U.S. at Winter Olympics, not Donald Trump. Olympic skier Lindsey Vaughn said told CNN that she will not be representing President Donald Trump at the 2018 Winter Olympics, but rather the American people. CNN asked Vaughn how she will feel representing the U.S. under Trump after competing during the terms of Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. I hope to represent the people of the United States, not the President, Vaughn responded.
I take the Olympics very seriously and what they mean and what they represent. What walking under our flag means in the opening ceremony. She continued, I want to represent our country well. When asked if she would go to the White House if she wins a gold medal in Pyeongchang. She said, absolutely not. Vaughn is one of many U.S. athletes who have spoken out against the president. His attacks on NBA and NFL players for taking a knee during the national anthem may harden support among his base. But they have earned him the enmity of many in the pro sports community. Obamacare insurance options dwindle for neediest U.S. patients. Josh Brookhart has four health insurers to choose from in Seattle's King County for 2018. More than many Americans like him who buy coverage on the Obamacare individual market. Yet none of the plans cover all the complex medical care needed for his seven-year-old son. Gabriel. Born with an extreme form of Chiari malformation, Gabriel required surgery to reinsert a part of his brain into his skull. He lives with hydrocephalus or extra fluid in his brain, and spina bifida, which causes abnormal development of the spinal cord. The Brookhart's insurer, Regents Blue Shield of Washington, said in June it would exit the Obamacare markets in 2018, citing unsettled marketplaces across the country, a move common to many insurers uncertain about the program's future under President Donald Trump. All of Gabriel's specialists, who span multiple medical centers and practices and have been coordinating his care for five years, were covered under regions. Based on the limited options for 2018 enrollment, the Brookhart's plan to pick an insurer that will cover some of Gabriel's care and expect to pay tens of thousands of dollars for the rest of his needs. I would pay a high price for a good policy. It's just mind-boggling to me that it doesn't exist, no matter how much I would want to pay," Brooke Hart said. Gabriel's case shows how difficult it can still be to find adequate health care for very complex conditions four years after Obamacare took full effect.